Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? This is Station. Uh, we are ready for the event. WUSA, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Caitlin Kraft with WUSA. How do you hear me? If you guys can hear me, it seems like we might be Hello, having a little Hello, we hear you loud and clear. Excellent, excellent. Thank you guys and, uh, so sorry, much, got... Mike and Jeanette. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to chat with me this morning. Seems like we might have a little bit of a delay, understandably so. Um, so we'll work through that and get right to some questions to be mindful of your time. So Jeanette, we'll start with you. What was it like finally seeing Earth from space after years of all of that training? Well, I could say that um, it was amazing. Um, you see pictures of it and you dream of it and you just never know what it's going to be like when you see the real thing, but it's still aw I was still awestruck to see it. So it's, it's absolutely beautiful to see the Earth from that vantage point, from this vantage point. And Jeanette, talk about how your studies at UMD helped prepare you for this opportunity. Oh, University of Maryland um, helped um, greatly. Um, you know, as a student, I was um, taught to build my own models, to fix my own models, to um, develop the um, analytical capabilities to describe what my model would do. And kind of here in space, we're, um, the big thing that we do is that we are the hands and eyes for all the scientists on Earth. And plus, we also have to take care of the space station. So as a student, we learned all the basic skills that you would need to do that. And, you know, over the years, you continue to hone and sharpen those skills. And, you know, that's, those are the skills that we need, like even today um, or yesterday, just taking boxes out of the cargo ship and transferring them to the station. You know, we're using basic tools and everything that we learned as a student, I learned as a student, you know, comes into play now. Well, there are a lot of folks here in the DMV and, of course, at the University of Maryland that are very proud of you. Talk a little bit more about what astronaut training at NASA was like. Oh, wow. Astronaut training is um, it's amazing. We, um, as ASCANs, you know, we start and we start learning about the International Space Station. We learn robotics. We learn to fly the T-38 jets. We learn to do an EVA. And so even beyond that, once we're... Um, past ast astronaut candidacy, we go on to do analog missions where you can live underwater for nine days or two weeks, or you can live in a cave for five days. Um, so all the analog studies that we do um, kind of simulate what we're doing here in space right now. And even the National Outdoor Leadership School classes that we do, we're, we're either camping in, the, in Utah or in Wyoming or we're uh, whitewater rafting in Alaska. All of these things te teaches us how to work together in a group as a team and to learn self-care and team care at the same time. So a lot of the training that we do, all of it contributes and it's led us here right now. Absolutely amazing. And talk a little bit more about what specific you'll, you'll be, specifically you'll be doing on the ISS during this expedition. Well, there's many, many different experiments that will come along through um, our uh, increment. And so, you know, right now we're configuring the station for our crew and um, we're helping the next crew, the crew that was here um, configure to go home. So right now um, we're doing a lot of taking things out of the dragon that brought us up here and helping to reconfigure the um, vehicle that was here already, the dragon vehicle. And in the future, we're going to do things like some cell biology studies, some stuff with the um, microscope here in the Japanese exploration module, and many different things on top of that. So very cool. And talk a little bit more about what it's just been like in space so far. How have you been eating, sleeping, doing all of these things that uh, seem are so much easier here on Earth? Well, that's a great question. We've been here a day and a half, and most of it has been just adapting, acclimating to the space environment. When, you know, once we hit zero G, the first thing that happens, you know, as Dr. Barrett stated to us, was that we'll get this fluid shift, 
and we'll get a puffy face. And then after about two weeks, we kind of acclimatize to that. So even with that happening, it's still amazing to be in space and float and try to <laughs> learn how to float <laughs> properly without knocking things over and snagging wires. So it's been fun and it's been, uh, you know, a little bit of interesting time adapting. And Jeanette, it's my understanding that this isn't necessarily the path you thought your life would take. Can you talk a little bit more about how you got here in space? How you got here in space. Well, as a kid, you know, I never thought that I would ever get selected to become an astronaut, but um, I chose to become an aerospace engineer at the age of nine, not realizing that that one thought at the age of nine would lead me to become an aerospace engineer. And, you know, once, um, once I finished school, I went on to work at the Ford Motor Company and for the government, and it was through those jobs that le led me to apply, partly because, you know, I learned to be deeply technical, but working for the government, I learned a little bit more about being operational. And when I tell students that, they always ask, what does that mean? Well, as a, as a scientist or a, an engineer scientist, I could probably help design and develop anything that flies, but I, I may not be able to fly it. But as an operator, you can fly it, but you may or may not be able to design it. So having those two talents come together is, to me, was what I thought made a great astronaut. If you can be deeply technical and operational at the same time, and being here on station, I could see where all of that is applicable. So eventually, after having worked for the government for seven years, um, I figured that, okay, well, maybe it's time that I apply. And, you know, even though I knew many people who were awesome and great who were applying and they didn't get in, I figured that, you know, that may have been my last chance to apply. So I, I went ahead and applied. And here I am. Absolutely amazing. And Jeanette, final question. What message do you hope your presence in space tells the next generation that may be watching from here in the DMV and beyond? Well, I, the big thing that I hope is that, you know, all kids um, from all countries, you know, everyone sees that this is an opportunity for them, um, for them to con either come to space or contribute in some way to get us further and further into space. So, uh, you know, I, I don't, um, I believe that as astronauts, we are leaders. We're not leading people, but we're role models and that makes us leaders. So. I hope that um, students who look like me or maybe even not look like me want to follow in my footsteps and potentially come here to the International Space Station or to the moon or maybe even Mars. Jeanette, you guys absolutely are leaders. Could not agree more. Do we still have Mike there with you? Yes, we do. Mike has been chasing things that are floating away <laughs> and he's getting them out of our way. Yeah. As you sometimes have to do in space, I would imagine. Now, Mike, this is not your first time in space. Talk about what it's like time and time again returning to the ISS. Again, returning to the ISS. Well, it's different every time, I'll tell you that right off the bat. I've been lucky enough to fly on two other vehicles before the Dragon, so I have a bit of a uh, point of comparison between the Russian Soyuz, my first flight, and the U.S. Space Shuttle, my second flight. Any ride to space is a good ride to space, and uh, the Dragon just is representative of new technology. It's a new generation spaceship uh, that brought me to this same space station as the, uh, the Soyuz did uh, back in 2009. So that's pretty neat. And uh, as Jeanette was describing, you know, the human body just goes through these changes once it gets back into zero-G. And uh, I just am very fascinated by how those changes uh, take place and how adaptable the human really is. Um, and uh, how we can literally just kind of become three-dimensional creatures again. Whatever your ride to space is, is uh, your, your time in zero gravity just reflects how amazing the human body is. Uh, it's, it's been uh, very gratifying for me to fly with three rookie flyers like uh, Dr. Epps here and uh, watch them kind of experience it all uh, for the first time, too. That's one of the big joys I have. Oh, that's amazing. Well, Mike and Jeanette, I wish we had more time to talk, but I know a lot of folks are looking to speak with you this morning. Thank you both for your time. Good luck, and I look forward to connecting, hopefully, once you're back down here on Earth. Great to talk to you. Thank you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WUSA portion of the event.
Thank you, Mike. You are free to go. Uh, Jeanette, please stand by for a voice check from the University of Maryland. Station, this is Andy Krakauer with the University of Maryland. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear. How me? Great. It's great to be speaking with you. I, I see, Jeanette, you're sporting your UMD gear, so that's great. Um, and I know making it to space is something you've been training vigorously for over the years. So what was it like for you to get that first look of the Earth from space? Well, I um, as I was saying earlier, you know, we've been here for a day and a half and it's still I'm still in awe of seeing the Earth from the vantage point that we had um, on the Dragon vehicle as we were approaching the International Space Station. I mean, you can see it and you can dream of, um, see it in pictures, um, even dream about those pictures, but there's just something um, that happens when you see it with your own eyes. It's just amazing. And I know you mentioned you've just been there a day and a half. Um, so what's it been like getting used to the practical side of living in space? Things like eating, sleeping, going to the bathroom even, um, things we here on Earth maybe take for granted. We definitely take it for granted. Um, we have been, um, I mean, one of the things that happens is that you get this fluid shift in your body. So you get a puffy face and it lasts for about two weeks. And then you uh, it may sound a little congested, but that's just the fluid shifting in your body. So over the next two weeks, my body will acclimatize and adapt to this um, space environment, no gravity. Um, the things that we're, we're doing is doing a couple of different things with the vehicle. We're taking things out of our vehicle, configuring it for staying here for six months, and then we're helping the crew that is here, we're helping them get ready to leave. And, you know, in the evenings and during the day, we'll have some meals together. Some of the things that I've eaten already were um, <laughs> some barbecue beef brisket, things like that. Um, we even have um, some interesting snacks, like um, I bought some, brought some figs along and we have dates and of course we have chocolate so you know the food here is comparable to the food that we have on the ground we just can't run out and get you know uh <laughs> to fast food or even get go to a restaurant and get food from there we just have everything um already up mass for us so adapting to life is um and even learning to use the waste hygiene compartment, the bathroom. So we're learning a lot and um, it's been a day and a half and things are already getting better, even just how to move around station and not float away <laughs> every time. So um, there's a lot and there's a steep, steep learning curve. It'll go on for two weeks though, but hopefully by the end of the week, I'll be more acclimatized and get better and better and better, so. Um, so what experiments, I know you'll be doing quite a few experiments during your stay. Um, so what are first on the agenda? Okay, so this week we don't have, so we didn't have a lot on our schedule as far as experiments. We had a lot of configuration for the station itself, but in the next few weeks we'll probably have um, some uh, plant studies, some cell biology studies, material science studies, um, and a lot on our own body. So we'll, I'll start doing some um, blood draws on myself and taking saliva samples and looking at how that changes over the six months. And then I know you studied aerospace engineering at UMD. Um, so what are some of the ways that that training has prepared you for the work you're doing on the ISS? And what are maybe some key engineering tasks involved with the maintenance of the station? Well, a lot of the stuff that we do, we do on behalf of other research scientists and institutes. So we're basically the hands and the eyes of all these scientists. And at University of Maryland, one of the big things that I was taught was how to make my own um, specimens, samples, and models. So making my own models, you have to learn a ton of different skills. You have to learn how to lay up the composites. You have to learn how to put, um, place a strain gauge on it and wire it properly. Then you have to learn how to do the analytical um, side of testing whatever specimen you have. So here, all the setup work that we do is the same thing that I was doing when I was 
building my own models and um, honing and sharpening those models, redoing it when something went wrong and rebuilding it. And so here, a lot of the stuff that we do is set up for the research scientists uh, back on Earth. But having the uh, research background can give you a better sense of how things should be because the scientists on the ground, they have one idea in mind, but you know, as we're putting it together, understanding that will help this experiment go better and better. And I know um, you, you just arrived a day and a half ago, as you said, um, but is, is there something that sticks out as the best moment so far or something that's been surprising to you? Uh, can, can you repeat that again? Um, just what has been the best experience so far uh, on, the, on the station or anything that's surprised you maybe? Well, one of the things that, um, it, it hasn't surprised me, but one of the things that I really enjoy is when we kind of sit around the dinner table and just have a chat. We're um, heating up our food and getting uh, water and drinks, and we're just kind of having a chat. And it's a really pleasant time where we're just sitting there and kind of taking in everything that's happened <laughs> and how amazing it is. Well, Jeanette, thank you so much for your time. It was great speaking with you, uh, and good luck with the rest of your mission. Thank you, uh, and good luck with the rest of your mission. And thank you so much. I'll chat with you soon again. <laughs> Station, this is the Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants.